year, I presented 16 walks in the British Isles. Following a break, I am resuming with number 17. Walking on Shanks's pony, as it is sometimes known, is the best form of transport for landscape photography. By all means, take the car first, but park it at the earliest opportunity, and then get walking. Cheers. There are hidden areas of the British Isles that, for no apparent reason, do not find immediate favour as places to visit or walk. National parks tend to act like honeypots, where it is the done thing to put them at the top of a photographic must-do list, becoming a cliché. There are plenty of other areas that are just as good, and perhaps best of all, you can have them to yourself whilst everybody else is jostling for a view in the lakes or Snowdonia. The Hergist Ridge falls into the category of a first-rate landscape of the beaten track, known, however, by walkers on the Offersdyke National Trail, which follows the Welsh border from the Severn Estuary to the Irish Sea at Prestatyn. It is in Herefordshire, west of Kington, a major stopping point for travellers on the trail. Leaving town, pop into St Mary's Church first. It is worth a look, before taking Ridgebourne Road to Hergest Ridge. There is limited parking further up, but not in the car park opposite the entrance to Hergest Croft Gardens, unless of course you wish to pay it a visit first. The lane, now a cut track, reaches the broad expanse of the ridge and soon the photographer receives a good idea of the terrain and what to expect. Although the ridge rises to more than 1,000 feet, the ascent is gentle. On a broad path, the climb hardly noticeable. This is a landscape that demands good weather as higher up the views are 360 degrees. My visit was in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, but by the time it reached England its power had abated. Nevertheless, it gave rise to some dramatic lighting interspersed by some decent stretches of sun. Photographically, this created a high dynamic range, and although the eye had no difficulty in surveying the scene, the camera needs a bit of help. It is not as good as you. There are several ways of overcoming the problem, but leaving the camera on auto is not one. Neither do I follow everyone else. I tell the camera what to do, no matter how clever it is technically. I am hand-holding the Olympus E-M1 Mark II with the 12-100 to Pro lens. Both have stabilizers, so that lightens the load. I saved the RAW, but underexposed, yes, underexposed, by minus 0.3 EV to avoid blown-out highlights in clouds. Then I spot meter off highlights and lighten shadows in post-production. The ISO is kept at 200. There is no point in changing that, but I set white balance to daylight or cloudy. I am exposing to the left, not right, because I do not like overexposed highlights in clouds that cannot be corrected. Of course, the risk I face is noise in post-production, but that might depend on the quality of camera and software. I don't follow trends. I am not a real photographer, so I am told. So you won't find me lugging a tripod or with loads of filters. I considered it but found the queue too long. I give you, at the end of the day, pure spring water. I continued my walk to the Welsh border. This is it, not much to see, is there? Before returning back over the summit, passing Welsh half-wild, apparently, grazing ponies and a clump of monkey puzzle trees. 
Their origin is unclear, but a good place to survey the far-ranging views and to have a snack before returning to Kington.